There's some very big words in here. Um, but suffice it to say that those different skills, either cognitive to do with your brain or manual to do with your hands, and routine, so you do it over and over and over again, or non-routine, it's different every time. Arguably, those are the different kinds of skills that are required of any job. If you dig holes for a living, that's your job, you do a lot of routine manual. Again, 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 it's the same again. But if you work, um, if you work solving maths problems, you're probably going to be out of a job very soon. Solving maths problems, routine, cognitive. Lots of that, solving problems, solving problems, solving problems. This research has looked at the changing nature of the skills required in, this is in paid work, but I reckon community work and unpaid work, the same, the same trend will happen. So between 1960 and the sort of a few years ago, these two skills have become more and more important year on year. What kinds of skills do you think those two are? People skills. People skills. People skills. That is the red one up the top. People skills. The ability to work with other people. And the other one? Problem solving, you've got it. So non-return to personal, uh, working with diverse teams of people, groups of people, working with teachers without teachers, working with your boss without your boss, working with a whole bunch of different people, and solving quite difficult problems. Not just the sort of problem you can call up on your phone or a laptop and, and find the answer to. So those are the two things that are deliberately woven into self-directed learning and learning centres. Learning centres, arguably, that's an opportunity for you to work as a community, together as students, to solve problems, to work on your own learning. Self-directed learning, arguably, is you spending more and more time problem solving, thinking, knowing yourself as a learner, learning to learn, and using those skills to make yourself a better learner. Professor Stephen Heppel says, actually the world's full of surprises. Please don't kid yourself that it's not. Don't try and remove surprises. Just <coughs> develop the skills to be able to cope with surprises. And that's what self-directed learning and learning centres are designed to do. So, when we think about learning centres, I've just only just been into your beautiful learning centre. Don't tell the others, but I've heard that yours is the best yet. <laughs> don't tell Kaipara, don't tell Northland. But we've got all these different spaces in here. This is not yours because I haven't got enough photos. I haven't got the brand new photos. But you can see, you, you recognise these different zones. Each one of these different zones, they couldn't be further away from that black and white photo of the old schoolroom that I showed you before. And it's deliberately designed to give you a range of different opportunities. So the, the opportunity to talk with someone sitting opposite them, to discuss things, to debate, but not to distract other people around you. The ability to reflect, to do something on your own, to think really hard about your learning, the problems that you're solving, and to do that in a, in a place that, where you're not going to be disrupted. The collaboration, the people skills that we know we need to be building. Working two people, three people, <laughs> four people, pulling a problem apart, explaining something to somebody else, defending your position, coming up with new ways of viewing things, the ability to work on your own, large groups, so boardroom table style stuff. If you're a committee and the committee has to come up with a project or you're putting on an event or you have to solve a problem, you've got spaces to be able to do that. That one's really hard to see, but that's the brainstorming room. I love, that's just a very straight brainstorm. Your brainstorming seats have got nice little curves on them. I think they're brilliant. Uh, but together, standing up, sharing, one person to the, to the many, practicing a speech, practicing some kind of presentation, but also brainstorming on the big whiteboard and the screens and all that sort of stuff. So the learning centers are really important vehicle for you to use all those different skills that are going to become important as you go through life. 
What is also really interesting is the research that's emerging now on how important learning environments, the physical environment, places like the learning centres, are for your learning. So one, one piece of research that's come through is this one came through last year. Having a well-designed learning environment, like what Unispaces have done with your learning centre, can contribute up to 16% to your achievement. This is you doing better in exams and in, in assessments and assignments as a direct result of your, of your physical environment. The second study, and this is, this is the last thing I'm going to share with you, is from a secondary school in, um, in Queensland, in Australia. And what they did was they compared this, the same students one group of students learning in old traditional classrooms and another group of students, same teachers, same content, similar use of technology in what, what is the equivalent of your learning centre. And they found all sorts of really positive benefits. The quality of the teaching improved, uh, the higher order thinking of the students improved, use of technology improved. But what I found most fascinating was the overall achievement. Same students, different environment, 16% improvement in English, 11% improvement in humanities, 19% improvement in maths, just because they had access to something like a learning centre. So it's, it's big, it's important, and it's a wonderful opportunity um, that, that the school has given to you. So I think it's just a wonderful celebration, first of all, of what West Mount has achieved, but also what you and the, the very hard-working staff of, of Tasman have achieved. It's a wonderful celebration, wonderful celebration, and I'm really thrilled to be part of it. So I hope there's something interesting, useful, thought-provoking in that little presentation. It's time for us to get ready to go and do the official opening. So thank you very much. <laughs>